This little boat is doing doing great. We'll film it later, but we have some cracks <laughs> all along the boat. We've been running it pretty hard. We broke the autopilot one day. We broke the sonar a couple of days. And, uh, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. up in Australia and came over here and getting ready uh, to go fishing. We got, uh, we got the L&H getting fueled up, camping out on the mothership, staying here for the next couple weeks and fishing every day. Give this baby a try. We haven't fished her yet, so uh, see how she does. Looking to have uh, Anthony come in in a few days. That's about it. That's all I got, David. Right now. Good. It's our second day here and figuring some stuff out. It's a pretty cool area, really vast area with a tremendous amount of ground we have to cover. Day one of fishing, baby. Here we go. Brazil. I feel like I'm playing a video game. Whichever direction we go, up small, down, small, doesn't really matter kind of pounds our brains out. So it's a little challenging at times. But um, today we started the day out and we caught a skipjack uh, going off into the deep right away, a real big one. And then uh, we caught a Dorado, we caught a sailfish, we found some thinning swordfish, which was really awesome, quite cool. The, uh, it looked like one female with a bunch of males around it maybe. They were all thinning in real close proximity to each other. I'd, I'd never actually seen that before, that many of them so close together. But I hope we can replicate this one day with Anthony because it's kind of cool. I liked it. And uh, one or two more days like that, it'd make it pretty special.
We gotta get out of here. I just got back from a sick day on the LNH. Uh, first day I went tree fishing with the boys. Now we've uh, caught two uh, on the on the LNH, uh, 400 and a 500. Uh, so that was super fun, super stoked to hang out with the guys. Don't get to see them enough. So yeah, super stoked, and uh, this is why we do it for days like this. <laughs> Got in to the airport, ran 30 or 40 minutes out here where we're anchored. You can tell it's really interesting here, right? A lot of clay, it's a little muggy, a little humid, and uh, we just had a quick lunch. We're gonna go fishing. Start of day two. Uh, we're uh, running, running 45 nautical miles again on this little jet ski. This is a uh, breakfast of, of champions. <laughs> if you shake it, we start salivating. <laughs> uh, I'm going to demonstrate <laughs> how things are done. I'll take a couple. On the old company. Oh yeah, uh, baby. We need a sponsorship. Backs are hurting. And uh, yesterday, the 150 ran. Look, look at this. It's like a drug meeting here. <laughs> <laughs> Young guns no more. Am I loose? No. How about now? Anyways, we're, we're, we're fishing, fishing a high spot, ledge, bank, whatever you want to call it. Our plan was to anchor the 150 out there. And the 150 actually does real well because at rest stabilizers, but we have wind and the current not cooperating. So uh, on anchor, it's actually completely uh, parallel to the beam to the sea. So they were tipping around pretty bad. So we tried, so they came back, uh, ended up coming from back into to the beach here. The good news is two hours run out, two hours run back in, we have that beautiful floating hotel that takes care of us. But uh, yesterday was officially day one. Day zero, we ran 45 out, fished for a couple hours and hooked a nice one. That's the one we got walked, dropped off. Um, that was a bummer. And yesterday being day one, we were uh, one for two. Um, lost one that we were guessing around 400. Uh, and then we let one go. A good five, easy five. Uh, Dave's got good footage of that.
ice on the boat, so which is uh, we're making progress. So which is luck. Wondering if that ice is that for your back or for the drinks. I'm just filming you, dude. Well, we're starting out with high hopes this morning. Check out this bank. It overnight completely came alive. Just amazing how the ocean works. But it was like this, what, Steve, eight, eight days ago? Yeah, eight days ago. Eight days ago. And then it shut off because of the wind and some dirty water that moved on to the Royal Charlotte Bank. You know, there's some monsters that live out here and that's our primary objective of moving the boats all the way down here for a shot at a lifetime fish. But regardless, until she comes, we're just really enjoying uh, our adventures and our travels. Acres and acres and acres of uh, bait, skipjack, bullet tunas, little yellowfins. We've got a few here, <laughs> one, one bigger yellowfin right there sticking out. But it's really all you wanted, and uh, we're trolling lures now. We may switch over later. We'll, uh, we'll make that call uh, when the time comes. But we're, uh, we're enjoying it, and I uh, got high hopes today. Wish us luck.
non-stop yesterday. Today we were, you know, pretty darn excited. Came out here early and all the bait's gone. So, and I mean all the bait is gone. And uh, it is now a little after 10. Uh, it's been a couple hours and we relocated the bait again. They have shifted. How many miles, Kevin? Five? They shifted five miles. So we're just starting to get in them now. You know, we've been fishing islands uh, and Great Bar Barrier Reef, which is all offshore stuff. Uh, this spot here is a Royal Charlotte Bank. It is huge, but it's mainland fishing. This is very different from, from island fishing. The currents are ripping here. The current is against the wind. So there's two or three different directions of swells and currents here. That makes it pretty, uh, pretty interesting here. But this little boat is doing, doing great. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll film it later, but we have some cracks <laughs> all along the boat. We've been running it pretty hard. Um, we broke the autopilot one day. We broke the sonar a couple of days. And, uh, oh, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. This trip felt like a true adventure, which is totally different from like a Madeira or Azores where everything is, you know, pretty set up and you come back to land every night and order pizza. But uh, I don't even know what Brazil looks like. I landed, you guys met me at the airport, put me in a van. I got off the van, walked five steps into the di into the inflatable, ran out here, and I've been out here for almost two weeks. I don't even, I, 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 you know, I we could be in Singapore and I wouldn't know the difference. 